So I thought it'd be helpful if I created a follow-up video on the video uh, where I virtualized OpenSense on Proxplex and showed that basic configuration. I didn't get into a lot of details in OpenSense because you could basically pick up from there and follow any of the other guides, just like it's a bare metal installation. But there's still a few questions for people that watch the video. And there's also got some interesting feedback on how to make things a little bit better, more streamlined. So a little bit less steps you need to follow. And I didn't realize it because most of the time I just use the CBIOS for my virtual machines. You know, since I don't really care about um, pass through and I'm just doing some quick tests on my OpenSense virtual machines and other virtual machines that I run, uh, usually the default settings work pretty well, just, uh, you know, in general. But for those who want to make this their main firewall, you know, and, and router, you probably want to try to pick the optimal settings for what you might want to use for your network, especially if you're going to be using pass through. So one thing I wanted to show, first of all, that someone pointed out, I didn't realize this because I was following the you know, PFSense documentation on how to set up a virtual machine since OpenSense doesn't have like a lot of detailed information on how to set up a virtual machine. So I thought I'd just kind of piggyback off of their documentation on PFSense since you know they're, they're based off the same platform of FreeBSD. And so the similar settings should work pretty well for each other. But when you go to create a VM, I'll, I'll just show you in these settings. I'm just gonna just make up some stuff here real quick just to get to the menu. I'm just gonna pick, you know, like we're gonna install OpenSense here. Um, when we get to here where we're picking the machine, Q35 is fine or whatever, but the this is what I wanna zero in on is the OVMF, the UE, basically the UEFI BIOS. If you click on this, by default it has the pre-enroll keys checked there. I didn't realize, let's pick this, get rid of this error first. What I didn't realize is with the pre-enroll keys is if I uncheck this, it'll disable secure boot, won't enable it by default, which is great because OpenSense doesn't support that. Whenever you go to the step of setting up the installer for OpenSense, it won't error out anymore. You don't have to go into the BIOS settings of the VM and you can basically skip that entire step. I already updated my documentation on my website to reflect that. So I just wanted to point that out, that that's something you can do there. And another thing I wanted to show, uh, I, get, I got a couple questions about this. I didn't show the configuration when I was testing the throughput between two different networks on my OpenSense. I, you know, I kind of briefly showed that I set up these different VLANs. You can see I set up the VLANs here and then I also came over and set up, let's say, guest DMZ. And I, I basically set up static IPs for them all. So the basic process with OpenSense in general, if you haven't been following my guides or any other guides, is you create your interfaces first. If you're doing VLANs, you create the VLANs first, assign them to interfaces, and then you can assign any other physical interfaces you want. And then the next thing, after you assign those interfaces and you give them static IP ranges, then the next thing you need to do is go to services and you go to DHCP v4 and v6 if you want to set those up this is the isc dhcp which is um being becoming deprecated but it's still the default um, settings that you would be using unless you want to experiment with kia dhcp which is going to be the next generation dhcp by it's by the same people that created the isc um, dhcp yeah and basically for each of these interfaces when you come in here you'll see you'll have your DHCP ranges for each of these. So once you have the interfaces assigned, DHCP services set up, then you'll just go to firewall. And so this is what I kind of wanted to show is the rules to test access between networks, make sure everything's connected properly between VLANs. You might want to set like allow all rules so you can allow everything for all networks for each of the networks. Uh, so you make sure everything works and you can communicate between the networks and then you can start tightening it down with the firewall rules You just have to be careful not to leave something open if you do that Some people might not feel comfortable doing that you just might want to try to lock it down from the beginning But uh, it's not a bad idea to do if you as long as you're doing it at the same time You're gonna be creating your rules. And you don't go back to it later and forget about it well, I'll show you if when I go to say the DMZ network here the source is DMZ net and the destination is any and I basically just clone these rules. So this is kind of a quick way you can add this rule to all your different interfaces. So if you do a clone, you can pick the different interface here, such as guest, and you can just pick guest net here. And so then you can just hit save. And then that'll put that one in the guest network, which I already did all that for these interfaces really quickly. When I was testing, I just didn't want to make that other video super long. So if you go to get might go to the guest network, you'll see I have a guest net to any destination and IoT is IoT net to anything. LAN is their default LAN IPv4 and IPv6. These are the default rules. I didn't change them. OpenSense creates these. You can change these if you want. 
But basically I allow all the protocols as well. I forgot to mention that the protocol is any, that's why that asterisk is there. Anytime you see an asterisk, that means any. So any port, any destination, any port, any gateway, any schedule, right? So those are all mean, um, basically allow all for the LAN network. Um, you can put any as a source, but it doesn't hurt to put the network that you are in um, when you're for testing, it doesn't really matter. Um, but then later you would go in and let's say for the DMZ network, you would go and you know add your rules here. You can delete this one out or change this one to, to only allow DHC, yeah, DNS and block access to all your other networks, and, but allow access to any other networks that's not local networks or private networks, which is basically the public networks, so the public internet, which I've shown you different examples in different videos on how to do that as well, and as well as my written guides on my website. But I just kind of wanted to show that because some people were curious, like how do you allow access to do this testing between the networks? Um, one other thing I wanted to show on Proxmux that I got a comment about is if is on the um, disks. Uh, if I go to next here, and I just have to get to this menu real quick. Uh, I just hit next just to show you some settings here. I, I, in my example, I had SSD emulation enabled. Someone mentioned that you have to click on this card if you want thin provisioning to work. But what I discovered was if you have thin provisioning enabled, it still doesn't use up the full disk space because with my OpenSense virtual machine, it was only it's only using three gigabytes of space. You know, I allocated 60, but what this card does when I read up more about it is when you delete files out, this will help clear up space on the host. Proxmox, you know, storage, underlying storage will get freed up and cleared up. Because otherwise, I'm guessing from what I read in the documentation, what it's what it's saying is it's going to slowly accumulate disk space if you don't have disk card to free up that disk space. It, it might slowly grow over time, even if you deleted the files out. So that's something to keep in mind, especially if you don't have a, that much disk space on your system. You might want to make sure you have disk card in, uh, enabled. I don't think it hurts to have it on there. And another thing is too, I'm not sure if the underlying operating system has to support it as well inside the virtual machine to be able to, to take advantage of this card because this is just passing through that, um, you know, that functionality um, to the underlying storage. Um, so I, I, you know, those are the things you need to research a little bit more to see this might be a more optimal setting to have that enabled. So just because this the way that you know thin provisioning works, you might want to have this card enabled. If you're not doing thin provisioning, it, this card this card is probably not maybe as critical. I don't know. That that's not, these are the settings I mentioned in the original video that you might want to do a little more research on and figure out what is optimal. So just just keep that in mind when you when you configure some of these things that there might be some other settings in here that might be a little bit more optimal than what I mentioned in the vi original video. I hope you found this little quick follow-up video helpful. I might do these um, uh, periodically for certain videos that I create, especially ones that got, you know, maybe more views and questions and feedback that if I mess up on something or there's a better way of doing something, I might go back and do these kind of videos because I can't really edit the original video very easily. So until next time, I'll see you guys later.